today we're talking about Six Avenue. For those of you that don't know, or you're brand new, 6M is a command normal that is an overhead. It must be block standing. And it is a medium. But unlike most, maybe you guys didn't know this, it scales like it, it basically does the damage of a heavy. So it has high base damage of a smashless heavy. Has a pretty amount of pretty good amount of pushback on block, but most importantly, as you can see, it leaves you zero on block, truly zero. It's one of the few situations in the game where you are actually plus. Your opponent must block standing, and you can use an assist for plus frames. This is very good as it helps you take your turn. See? So, you should definitely just block. And that should be the end of it, right? That's basically what you guys know of 6M. That's pretty much it, right? thing is, because of the way Dragon Ball works, being zero on block is a very unique privilege in most situations. So having a button on everyone that can give you zero, I know hitting meaty can combo. I actually don't like 6M meaties, to be honest. They're like the easiest to reflect, and you don't really have any reflect proof options off of it, off of it the way you would like if you went like you know, Super Jump by AD. So I, I don't care much for 6, uh, six MBDs personally, but that's not the point. Point is, 6Ms are incredibly good for being in a zero on block situation, but it creates a situation that I like to, that most people would call an RPS. I like to call it for what it is, a gambit. A gambit where you and your opponent take an acceptable level of risk, and then you guys can decide from there. Because here's the thing. We're going to talk about what being zero on block truly means. It means that both characters can act on the same frame. So, if I... He's a Goku, so this might not work. Let me see. With Kefla. Oops. We trade. Oh, wow. Sell. Sell. Can I not clash with Cell? That's crazy. Alright. Weird. Means we can hit each other. Wow. God, Kefla's weird. Okay. We've talked about this before. Characters can clash. Clashing creates another zero on block situation. Which means characters can act again see i can but because it counts but here's the strange thing right because it's a zero on block situation i can actually gatling my 5ll because you can do that on whiff so you have gatling options here however the gatling option is never as quick as characters that can actually gain access to a 4ll as we know 4ll gives you two jabs that are true on block can go into 5LL, but most importantly, are very, 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 very good for uh, Clash Wars. Because if a Vega hit, I can Clash again. Some characters actually gain access to a 4L, but only on Clash. For example, Cell, which would have been nice to demonstrate, but yep, yeah, there you go. So, what this means is that you engage in what's called a clash war. It's where you and your opponent agree to go clash, clash, 
and then choose an option. The Clash War will get its own thing later down the line, but that is something that you can do. That's something that a lot of my mid-level players know. You guys probably know about the Clash War, you guys probably engage in the Clash War, and you guys know the sequence. Basically, you need the magic button number. 669. 66. Six. And then you need a 9 frame move, because if you have a 9 frame move, you can actually win a Clash. So for Cell, it would be... Yeah. It would be that. 5LL is a 9 frame normal. But most importantly, so is 5M. Which means that Cell is really good at the Clash War. What makes him even stronger at the Clash War than you might expect is he also has this. This is an 8 frame option. So, he can actually do... He can actually do... Uh, uh, uh. That's kind of crazy, considering that Cell is actually one of the best characters at Clash, because even if he manages to Clash, it's a multi-hit, which means that he continues powering through the Clash and actually wins the interaction. Cell is one of the best characters when it comes to the Clash War, and as a result of being so good at the Clash War, he coincidentally is, well not coincidentally, more like intrinsically, is also very good at abusing 6M. When somebody uses 6M, it is in your best interest to call an assist, because for those of you that may not know or are new to the game, you can't combo after 6M. See? But if I call an assist, I can combo. That's very, very good for convergence. Lab out your 6M combos, guys, because they do scale a bit differently than you're probably normally used to. But... Oops. Point being, I should lab out Cell's uh, plus frames. But more importantly, Cell, really, really good character at the 6M interaction. However, we're not here to talk about the Clash War. See, when you're plus, this situation, I'm sorry, when you're zero, this situation blows up so intensely that every character now has a lot of options and it becomes a true RPS. One of the few situations where this is truly an RPS. This, not an RPS. This, however, is. 6M, especially when it's plus like that. Hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that strategy later. However, point being, 6M is a very vicious, vicious situation because both characters have the ability to act at the same time, which means characters like Beerus can now use their DP. However, if he uses his DP and I do nothing and call a delayed assist, I block the DP and he gets hit. That's what I mean when I say it's an RPS situation, because I can still call my assists because it's a normal. Well, there we go. So, my assist will always be a little bit faster than his, but that's okay. Because he's got a lot of options to, to deal with here. See, he can DP, but what's more important is that he has a lot of ways to escape the situation. He can fuzzy jump. So if he jumps, this is how you defend against 6M, guys. 6M is one of the few situations where it is actually safe. No joke. It is actually safe to interact with your opponent's pressure. This is one of my most common questions. How do I escape my opponent's pressure? How do I escape your pressure cap? That's one of the questions that I get the most. And in all honesty, one of the easiest ways is if you win the 6M interaction. Because, for example, if I do this, I can catch you jumping. 
when I otherwise can't. So if you want to bypass the interaction altogether, you can actually try fuzzy jumping. However, if I catch you, I am plus eight, which is not a great situation for you. Another thing that a lot of people do after 6M is they'll try to catch a backdash. Fuzzy jumping can do that as well. But the reason why people try to backdash is because... If they buffer super jump, you can actually jump out of a 6 frame drop. That's true. Uh, does anyone have a wrong way to react to 6M? Like, I2H instead of blocking high on reaction. Uh, no, I mean, it depends. That is the incorrect reaction, but that might be because you're used to blocking stuff like this. Like, you're used to blocking pressure like... This. If your opponent does this a lot, it's very tempting to basically 2H to 6M. However, like, especially if they do that, very tempting to 2H this. The problem is 6M is also 24 frames, which is really good because it pairs beautifully with Dragon Rush for the amount of people, press 1 if this has been you, where you actually tried to tech that 6M. Especially after a 5L. Yeah. It's another option you have to look out for, and it's a universal option. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. However, buffering Super Jump during the 6M might be pretty good. Not a bad, not bad tech. Not bad tech. However, we'll talk about 7 framers in a bit. However, Cell, having access to this, is amazing. But, when we come to 6M, this situation is so much more textured and nuanced. Because something that your opponent has mid-screen is they can backdash now because they are better than minus two. Now, he can backdash safely, and you have to dash OS. This is something that you see a lot. 6M solo into dash. If you've seen that at a high level, that's because they're trying to read a backdash and abuse their plus frames. But you might be wondering, why would anybody hold anything after 6M? See, that's the thing. This situation is so nuanced and so crazy with so many different options and configurations that your opponent can actually adapt to what you do based on when you 6M and the resources where you have to 6M. And the reason why you want to be careful buffering super jump is because if they stagger, they can do that. And that can throw off your timing. Because they're plus. Oops. Especially if they have plus setups or if they have really nice pushbacks on their... Oops. There we go. Like that. Plus four. You should be very, very careful and know your 6M situation. Yeah. She is tougher. You kind of know when you're plus, though, if you lab these sorts of setups. But, point being... Point being, 6M is something that I want you guys to use a little bit more often for a couple of reasons. One, you force a reaction. See, my opponent, if I'm blocking like this, doesn't have to react to anything. But if I give them this, they have to react to it the same way they would the R, the same way they would cross-up, fake cross-up, 6M is part of the mental stack, so don't ever discount 6M even if you're solo, but understand what's likely. If you have a character that is, let's say, like Vegeta, and he has resources and your opponent doesn't, you can offer them a 6M clash situation. So what you'll see is this.
But notice how I can't quite out of the corner. Let's see if I do this. The pushback might be too much. Yep, there we go. So you, what you might see is this. If you see this in the corner, your opponent was likely trying to engage with you in a clash situation. The reason why is because Vegeta has a 9 frame medium, which means he's very good at the Clash War, and if he knows your character's frame data and you don't know what to press, you're likely going to die on the Clash War. It is very, very important that if you are watching this, you take a look at all of your character's frame data and see what their fastest buttons are. The golden area is usually 669. If you don't have anything that's 9 frames, you might have a bit of a problem, but don't be sad if you don't, because there's actually something that you can do that is pretty fun. And some characters can do this for sure. But basically, if you engage in the class situation, let's say I want Beerus to do... Mm. Let's see. There we go. Hopefully I can time this correctly. Is he not? I I know Kefla does, but I don't want to risk it with Kefla because she's weird. Very hard to lab clash for situation, sadly. <sighs> there we go. That's a clash. What I've seen that's really, really funny, the especially if they're good at the clash war and they're not paying attention to your resources. God, this is tough. There we go. There you go. You can do that. That's mean. And I could actually do that at any point in the string as well. On reaction to the clash. That's how textured and layered this situation gets. See? So they might think that, they're, that we're going for the Clash War, but nah, you're getting the DP. This is a particularly good strategy with players like of characters like SJ Vegeta that get sliding knockdown on their DP. Or uh, if they're a character like um, Beerus that get moderately decent meter gain and reward for their DP. This is actually a pretty good option, especially for Vegeta. So... Let me do this, actually. Oof. Ah. Fuck. This is really tricky. Careful, stop punching me. Kefla, stop punching me! There we go. Oh, I missed. You could potentially do something like that, which is fun. They take the hit on the DP. They get put into a pretty bad situation. And that's an option that is exclusive to some characters with frame 1 reversals. Coincidentally, the same thing can be done if you do... This. That did not hit me. But, there you go. So because you are able to actually have a frame one option, there's actually a little bit 
more of an offensive nuance there that actually isn't always present, which is pretty cool. Different characters have different takes on the Clash War as well. Kefla is particularly good at the Clash War because she actually has the ability to use it to escape. If you're a Kefla main, the Clash War could be something that you can use to get out. Because Kefla, while it doesn't have anything frame 4, she does have this. So if I go... She gets out. Which is a pretty neat little situation. And because she can act, she could also probably do that. Oh, nope, the assist call got eaten. Sad. Point is, she could probably use this to take her turn. It's fun. And she can make the DP whiff, which is super, super, super fun because I believe... She can still attack from here. Which is pretty nice. Every character is very different when it comes to their clash. But that is a legitimate option that you do have when trying to escape 6M. So you might be wondering, okay. Hey, what's good? <clears throat> what's good, Agua Reader? Um, the best way to actually get out of these situations, and the reason why I say being able to react to universal mechanics and having good defense is incredibly important is because the best way to escape a situation, especially with 6M, is to reflect. If they reflect, I can't do anything. I'm still in recovery, so I can't rocket kick immediately before they can act. There is no reflect-proof string you can have. I could theoretically jail with my assist to come back. But if they reflect again, they might be out of the situation entirely. And even sometimes, if they do... You know, if we do... Like, let's say we do... The reflect will... Oh, you could probably do something like that. See? You can even run up and take your turn after calling with an assist, if you have one. But even then, if they reflect the assist, approaching them is not necessarily free. You have to play the reflect mind game now, which is a pretty interesting interaction. We've spoken. Thank you so much for the follow, by the way. I really appreciate it. Hogwarts Raider. Very nice. Point is, this is a situation that can be a little bit tricky. Because, basically, nothing is guaranteed. You're basically playing a mind game or a gambit with your opponent where both players are truly at neutral and they have to vie for... Uh, they have to vie for a positional advantage. Because of that, 6M is pretty useful. Now... That's one option. But what happens if my opponent just decides to do that? I can't backdash frame one because of the way this thing reads inputs, which is really fucking annoying. Arxis, fix this, please. This is really irritating. You can actually backdash out of 6M. Now, some characters are particularly good at this, though, so be careful. They can also take the risk and follow you. If you get called out. If you want to do that, so... You want to keep true to your options, but just like Vanish, it is a little bit of an RPS situation, and they have ways to really call you out. So be very, very careful. Especially if they have big buttons like that. Do you know how to do Tots? Uh, some. But. Anyway. Reflect is a really good option against 6M. But if you block a 6M, Backdash is pretty good. It can get caught, so don't, over don't abuse it. But yeah. And as, uh... As, um, I believe it was Inzim set, super jump and buffering super jump could be the way. However, be careful, like I said. Because if you're late, you can't get hit. 
So be super careful. Make sure to buffer it when you block. I don't think... I would probably have to get the bot to do it. I would have to get the recording to do it, I think. So, here. I'll have to do it myself. It's actually harder than it seems. Yeah, it's actually pretty tough. It's really tough to input manually. Actually, I am super jumping. That's another thing to keep in mind. You can actually see I am super jumping, but that JL will catch you and bring you back down to the ground. There are some characters, however, with standing lows. So Adult Gohan and 18, they cannot catch you if you jump to 6M. So if you block a solo 6M from 18, you can actually get out, but 18 has a very unique situation. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So, that being said, 6M works in a particular way because the way Dragon Ball works is there are universal mechanics that characters are balanced around. And having these universal mechanics is very, very important because different characters rely on them differently. For example, Kefla really likes Dragon Rush because 6H exists. She also likes 6M because, 6, uh, because 6H exists. And she has ways to make this all very tricky to react to. There are a lot of times, even a high level, where I see somebody, even Wawa, get counter hit on a 6H rather than not blocking, and you can actually f go it frame by frame, and you see him stand up and enter the Dragon Rush pose to tech, or jab to try to tech it, and he gets hit. So, it's something that you have to be very, very particularly attuned for. Discovering the alerts, I see. Nice. Anyway, point being is that you can utilize these particular, you can utilize these particular uh, threats to your advantage, and you can gather a lot of information about your opponent. For example, if they don't know anything about the Clash War, it's a free reset. <laughs> you can just do this all day. Now, however, they can mash on you, so be careful. And of course, if you can react to 6M, reflect it if you can, but you must. Be warned, you must reflect this on reaction. If you reflect the second you feel a gap, you will die to this. You will also die to this. Where even if you could tech DR, because you input reflect, you're in a shitty situation now. So please bear that in mind when actually use, utilizing 6M. You can't get mashed on, so be careful. Now, how can 6M help your stagger pressure? And how, does, how can we use 6M to our advantage? Well, as you guys know, 6M is an overhead that they have to react to, and you can obviously call it with an assist. But if you don't have an assist or an assist is on cooldown, you can pick very interesting situations. And your rhythm can make 6M much harder to deal with. For example, if I just do a true string, you could feel that gap, right? But what if I do... See, that 6M is a lot harder to react to at that point. Your opponent, even if they can react to 6M, your opponent is going to have to stay awake to block that. Uh, I mean, if you're having fun in the Discord, that's fine. I don't really see you around very much, so... As of right now, I'm not kicking anybody for not renewing their subs, but... Uh, yeah, you want to be careful with that, so... That's a nice 2L, now that I think about it. It's also very good for when you want to make your opponent react in different ways. For example... So, these are ways you can incorporate 6M into your stagger pressure. Because you can make it very, very risky to mash. Or reflect by incorporating dash resets that bait stuff 
so you guys know that part already. You guys should be doing the homework, right? However, 6M is pretty good. Here's the interesting thing about 6M, though. If your opponent gets hit, you're actually plus three, which means the entire situation and position transforms. So you're not plus enough, unfortunately, to actually take a turn because you have no Gatling options. So because you have no Gatling options, your opponent can't engage in the Clash War now. If they don't block 6M, they've lost the Clash situation because they're minus three now. What that means is even the fastest of jabs is not going to be quick enough because you're no longer zero on block and you're recovering behind your opponent, which leaves them susceptible to unique mix-ups. For example, this. They now have to guess. This situation became a whole lot more complicated as a result of it. Well, complicated for you, the defender, not for the attacker. So you definitely want to make sure that you at least block 6M because your advantage is gone when you don't. Now your opponent has a free reset and they're only minus one. So you have to mash frame perfectly to catch it and a dash reset's not a reactable situation. Especially if they dash block and call an assist. So if I know you like to mash even when you're minus, I could just do this. And if they press a button... They can actually get hit. Especially if you call a beam assist. Oops. Oof. Maybe if the assist appears behind you. But Kefla's jab's too good. But if I press 5L first, they get hit. So, definitely keep that in mind. And cross-ups also beat that as well. So keep that in mind as well. What's really funny is now I can clash with my 2L. I can actually still win if I just 2L. Ah, huh, neat. There we go. So this situation, really, 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 really nice and really, really fun for the attacker. But if your opponent doesn't block 6M, make sure to punish them for it. Namely me, because I don't block 6M. So if you fight me, just hit me with 6M. I guarantee you I'll probably die. But if I block it, you better have the Clash War on point or I'm zoom zooming the fuck out of there. Just, le just letting you know. But 6M situation is a very, 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 very neat one if they get hit. They block it, though. You know? Then you have a clash issue. One thing you can do, however, one option select that if you do get hit by 6M, because you might be wondering, well, shit, if I get hit, I just kind of lose, don't I? Mm. Not necessarily, because... You can dash block. Maybe, let me have a good hit, actually. And get out of that situation. But at that point, if you have the awareness to do this, you should have the awareness to block success. So, <laughs> kind of big brain. Of course, you actually still have time to block. That's pretty cool. So you're not completely out of options. And this is particularly important because if your opponent wants to do this, now I'm minus eight because if I backdash, and some people do backdash on their 6Ms, which is another brilliant tactic that we'll talk about right now. But if they backdash their 6Ms, and you can do this on block, you can actually chase them and put them in a position where they're minus. My cell right now is minus eight. Which means if Kefla can, if Kefla wants to be frame perfect, she can 2L me, she can 5L me. If I am not aware or I'm not going to block and whatnot, or if I don't block in time, she could potentially even 2M me. So at the very least, she gets her turn back after blocking the 6M. That's her reward. It also negates the cross up. 
So if I do something like cheeky, like this, she can actually just get out of that situation for free now. Which is pretty nice. But here's the other thing. Remember that you're not the only one that knows about the Clash War. Your opponent might know about the Clash War too. So you can actually invite them to the Clash War. And then... If you want to be really mean... And that puts them in pressure because a lot of people will just straight up mash the options that they want. Not realizing that there's no time for a Clash. Or you can even do a cross up and whatnot. You can jump JS and make their, uh, if you have the right character, and you can basically, you can do, I think they, I think they would actually still catch you if you're not careful, but remember, you're in control of the 6M, which means you can control the spacing, and we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> but, that's a bit of a crazy, very niche situation. The most common situations that you see, if you block a 6M, dash block, Engage in the Clash War, or even backdash if your opponent is eager for the Clash War to escape all entirely. However, you might be thinking, wow, this is so complicated. How am I going to remember all this? Well, like I said before, if you want to bypass all of this, even solo, the best thing that you can do is reflect the 6M. Reflect the 6M bypasses all of this, guys. Even if your opponent puts you back and block stun right after, it's not that big of a deal because now there's no threat. You're back to the same situation you were in before. And you are free to try again if they 6M you again. And 9 times out of 10, if you just reflected the 6M, they're probably not going to 6M again because they want to hit you. So you potentially neutralize the situation that you might not have to look out for anymore. The situation is very nuanced. However, that said, remember, a lot of characters have elements that are unique about their 6M situation. Some characters, like Vegeta, Kefla, and Cell, can all make their um, 6M+. Plus. This is where things become a risk. This is bait. And the reason why, especially if it's a character like Kefla, for example, she has a very far-reaching jab, which means... Like... If she's plus, her 6M travels forward. Yeah. If I can make that 6M+, plus, there is no Clash situation. You have to continue blocking or gamble a Reflect. And because I'm plus, I also have time to dash block. So if you Reflect, that Reflect can get baited and you can easily die. This is how you can essentially open somebody up, even if they react to everything. Because there are too many valuables, and if they simply choose the wrong option to deal with your 6M, they can easily get hit. That's why a lot of people just block. So Day opened in this chat, Day if you're still here, that he opens up T with this. This is actually not good for T. T should absolutely reflect. There is no reason to hold 6M. If you are holding 6M, it's because you are genuinely reacting and you didn't have time to reflect. However, if... At that point, you should be on guard and looking to reflect anything that you can until after the 6M situation is dealt with. So either they do this, or they do nothing else and try to do this. At that point, you need to confirm whether or not they have an assist, and you need to think about reflecting. Because you might not be able to reflect the assist, but you can reflect the clash. That's another thing that you can do. This is where your reflect-proof strings will come in. But again, Reflect Proof Strings, if I input one like with Kefla, which is this, I lose if she actually accepts the Clash. You can kind of option select that. And I believe some of those option selects exist. So that's a situation that you guys have to think about. There is a lot of detail. Think of this as an introduction to 6M because I can go into detail and extreme depth about all of the options you, your 6Ms can have. So definitely bear that in mind. And we will watch a couple of odds towards the end of the evening that will go ahead and confirm this. But this is a big deal. Because 6M is one of the few places where you can actually truly escape. Now, there is an elephant in the room. Thank you so much, uh, Tufu Toy. I really appreciate the follow. The big elephant in the room is...
seven frame jabs. I believe Janemba has a seven framer. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Who else has a seven frame jab? Hmm. No, I'd rather talk about 18. Fuck the other characters. <laughs> this is almost Team Jilla, to be honest. Now, you may have heard, seven frame jabs. If you're zero on block, you're actually minus one. What do I mean by that? Well, your fastest button is seven frames. So if your opponent decides to engage in the Clash War, you lose. This is something that you guys can think about if you see a Vegito that is recklessly trying to abuse respect and 6Ms you. There's not a lot they can do. There is not a lot Vegitos can do. Womp womp, right? Sad for Vegito. Well, you see, that's the beautiful thing about is this character is rather dumb. A lot of blocks, though. Wow. As you can see, you can't even mash. You can't even mash a 6M. Oh my god. Lol? I did not know 2 had that much block stun. Jesus. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. No wonder this thing jails into Vanish. Vegito's dumb! Oh my god. <laughs> now here's where shit gets really mean. Vegito, in the corner, doesn't really have much he can do. He can stagger. You know? stagger. However, here's the beautiful thing. If you're not careful, your jab can whiff. Which means Yosha. This character is fucking evil. <laughs> that is why you'll often see some Vegito players when they stagger do this. Because he can space out so well that your jabs can whiff. So be very aware of the situation, guys. And be very aware of your spacing when engaging in the Clash War, because Vegito that might actually be what he wants. So, yeah. Character is so silly. Oh, 
Oof. You can't even mash his 6M sometimes. That's kind of crazy. This character really plays by on a whole different level, to be honest. And if he has an assist, he can actually start having a lot of fun with you because he could just 6M and then probably just... Not that. 6M. I don't even know. 6M. Backdash. Wait for something to whiff. Hope you do something. 6M. And then still pressure you from a distance where your jab would whiff. That is... Privileged. That cross-up was cursed. See? Did you get hit by that cross-up? Point being... You got hit, bro. I don't even need to ask. That's rhetorical at this point. <laughs> he has so many ways to space himself out. See, you're getting called out by your friends. And of course, if he's plus, he's got this. So not all 6M situations are, uh, not all 6, uh, 6M situations are equal. Just because a character has a 7 framer, be very, very careful and make sure you lab against it, guys, because they could have a way that can kill you for it. Now, you might be wondering, what creates that situation? What allows... Vi yeah, you didn't block that cross of T, I'm sorry. I don't believe you. I believe T blocked a cross up like that. Okay, T. Let me ask you this, though. Did you block it because you knew it was going to cross up? Or did you slip up your hand? Be honest, bro. Be honest, boy. Because I don't believe you. You can literally just do this all day. Oh my god. That's a 50-50. T, I refuse to believe that you block that cross-up when you get opened up by this. Yeah, you get opened up by that when you're awake. What do you mean? But, to demonstrate the 6M situation and how 6Ms are unique, 18 kind of loses out on the 6M situation. She should not be pressing 6M very much unless she has an assist to help her. T, literally everyone here has fought you when you are asleep, bro. Or when you're, or when you're awake, bro. No one here believes you. What does that tell you? He gets hit by that. He gets hit by those. Remember, guys. He holds Goku Black's command grab, and I made him do it on stream, so we can't even deny it. God, 18 so fun. T, I hold I made you hold it twice. All 
All right, T, well, how about this for an option select? What if I told you that the pressure you're used to blocking is Ken not warmed up and exhausted from a long day of work? You've never fought 10 a.m. Ken. I just woke up and my coffee's starting to kick in, Ken. You get opened up like this. T, you hold this! And you get hit by the third one! You can't pull a fast one on me, boy. I know all of your tricks. I'm sorry, T. I don't believe you. Day, do you believe him? Yes, it does. No, nah, I don't believe him. I'm sorry, T. Your own friends don't believe you. T, I guarantee you, you know what would open you up? Not the 50-50, but this. That, that would open you up. That's your fault for playing Yamcha. Ten AM Ken is the ten is the Ken that trains with Star. Put it that way. Have you ever played 10 a.m. T though? No, but I've seen you play when you were fully awake and at your best on in tournament. <laughs> and what do you mean 10 a.m. T, bro? You don't get any sleep. You're a teenager. You out here messaging me at 2 a.m. in the morning and then waking me up at 7 a.m. in the morning with a message? I like this jab. I have actually seen Star do this to somebody before. Just literally this. T would get hit by that. Chat, would T get hit by this? Day, what do you think? Do you think T would get hit by this? Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't mean the DR. I meant the fifth jab. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he gets hit by the jab. But then he gets hit by this. He gets hit by the frame trap. He gets hit by the 5 LL. But you know what he does get hit by, though? He gets hit by that, too. <laughs> Whiff cross up into low. Nah. I don't believe you. Bro, I've hit you with a the, the adult Gohan with cross up standing low.
Hmm. He got hit by this. He got hit by that because he saw the setup and thought, oh, he's definitely going to go for the cross-up. And then he gets hit by the same side. Point being, my friends, this turned into a laughing stream now. Because 18 is so fun. I really like her buttons. But anyway, the point is, 18 is kind of in a weird situation when it comes to 6Ms. Because she cannot jail them to the ground. They can always escape her jab. They always jump out of her grab. There's nothing she can do about it, no matter how quick you press the button. And the reason why is because a standing low has a very low to the ground hitbox, and their hurtbox leaves the vicinity of that hitbox, unfortunately. Which means that she has no technical way to jill them to the ground with a solo except. But what if I told you that was by design? You might be wondering, wait, I don't understand. Why would anybody design that? Like, that seems like it's a clear weakness. It is. But she has a tool to make up for it. This. It is much slower. It is much slower than 6M. But if you play with your rhythm... People will hold it. And Kasuga can vouch for this. The amount of times people got hit by this because they tried to super dash this. It looks like 6M. Watch the animation. Here's another thing that makes it unique. As you can see, unlike 6M, she is plus 8 of true... Well, not true, of Key Blast block stun. But that's more than enough to dash block so they could with reflect. That's more than enough for her to continue her turn. That's more than enough for her to do this. This is potent. And not only that, but she retains her air actions, which means she could do this. And they could reflect... But this can create some unique situations. He got hit by that cross-up. And I know that because he, I know he can't block this character. Nah, dude. <laughs> There's a difference between blocking and guessing. You guessing. Because you get hit with this. <laughs> That's debatable. I have a 50% chance I guessed right. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I'm capping. He got hit by this. <laughs> Hello. Nah, I didn't get hit by that. 
Got oh god, he got hit by this. Or even better. Or my favorite. Did you mash? Yeah, I know, T. I know, I know, I know, bro. I know. Point is, very, very potent mix up because you probably got hit by the low there, too. Because that did not look like I was going to cross up. I got mixed, bro. I didn't think I was going to cross up. Hey. <laughs> of course, you would be standing the entire time, right? So, I probably wouldn't be able to do that to you. I'll just do... Hey! You got hit. <laughs> Everyone got hit. It's an unreactable command grab. And then... You got hit by this. <laughs> we love you, T. I'm messing with you, homie. I would have sparked the level 3. What if you didn't have spark? You got hit by that. My favorite. I sparked at that level 3. Lol. But the point is... Sorry guys, off topic again. 2S? Because it looks like DR. The way she utilizes her 6M is because a lot of people are eager to disrespect this, which means that they're willing to hold this. However, it is true that her solo 6M situation, unfortunately, is not as good as other characters. But the fact that she uses 6M and incorporates it into her game plan with 2S is actually pretty interesting and definitely an option to keep in mind. See, that's kind of mean. See, what if I do this? Reflect, bro. Wait, what if I... Hang on. Nah. I like this character. I'm sure there's something fucked up you can do. Attack the EX-17. Oh, God. What happens if they de army there? Curious. Okay, cool. <gasps> That's mean! <laughs> LOL! Oh, that's fucked up! That's fucked up! Just out. Okay, so you can actually hit me there. And if I just mash, I attack. Cool.
I can't cancel from that into... Oh, wait! I could just do this! Oh, no. Huh. Yeah, because it's not throwing ball. Fuck. That's assuming you're frame perfect, though. What happens if you're like, like, what happens if you're like a button late or like, let's say four frames late? Oh, that's mean if I have Yamcha or a fast assist. What if I have a big brain? What if I have a very big brain? Oh my god. Can you imagine this happening to somebody in tournament? Normalize the defensive DRs. Oh, yeah. But if... Yeah. Yeah. You could tech the... You could tech the 17 there. Just don't tech the 17 here. Or you die. All right, point is, guys, that is the 6M situation for 18. Hopefully, this gets you thinking about 6M, and I hope you guys start thinking about ways to incorporate 6M because it's a very good tool. Even if most people can react to it, it is still a really, really good tool to have because having it is going to help you develop your pressure. It's going to help you structure it. It's going to help you make your ry rhythm ambiguous, find very good reset points, good setups, and hopefully become a little bit bolder. And in order to learn more about the greatness of 6M, we're going to go ahead and watch a couple of matches from the king of 6M himself, Benrich. Let me see. Let's do... Let's watch a couple of VODs from Fenrich and Goichi. And let's see how Goichi interacts with success. Alright. Let's take a look. And let's see if we can learn anything. Not from Hulu. Teenager Kate Wallace. She was so happy. That was not a teenager, bro. He's at least 25. Alright, we got some neutral, which we can definitely talk about some other time. Goes for the DR immediately. Smart. Six M right in the first string. And he does it in a really unique place. Something that I didn't talk about before is the worst place where you can actually 6M is after 5M five, uh, five or 2M. And the reason why is because most people expect 6M at that point. They normally expect 6M at 5M, 2M. If you want to be really ambiguous and make sure that your opponent really reacts to 6M, do it after 5L or 5LL. Those are usually the best places to do it because they're not expecting it at that point. 
And once again, this is the way Goichi decides to interact with it. Notice how Fenrich did not call an assist here. He was going for something else. He went for the clash. He offered the gambit. Goichi declined. And there was nothing he could do to chase this situation. But Fenrich manipulates the position in order to get an advantage. That is a very Fenrich thing to do. As you can see, Goichi not really into the uh the not really necessarily into the uh not into 6M as much necessarily. He prefers the 50-50. Probably more effective. There you go. No 6M. Ooh, great raw tag. Those raw tags are hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. GT mirror match. The most cancerous mirror match in my opinion. I hate this. I hate this character and I hate them. Goes for a DR that time. God, I hate when people... I hate when you do a setup, people react weird to it and then get fucking hit. It's annoying. All right, let's get to a block stream situation. No 6M. Goes for a cross up into DR. Very good. Go, he's just like. Eh. That's so fucked up. 6M. But now Goichi doesn't have any way to escape. Bardock does have an 8 frame option. And he does have 3 bars. If he wants to play this Clash War, he probably can. The problem is, Cell is an incredibly formidable opponent in the Clash War as well. Because his Rolling Crush operates very similar to his 236M. And I believe it has more hits, if I'm not mistaken. I could go into the lab and figure that out, but it's not a good situation. On top of that, Rolling Crush continues to travel, meanwhile his Lariat travels upwards. This is a very, very scary advent, uh, uh, situation, and it's probably in Goichi's best interest to just block. What he could have done here is if he reflected, he would have had to deal with Vegeta Assist potentially, but, you know, it is what it is. Excellent pressure. One more time. Excellent pressure. Six M again. And we got a backdash again. You can actually see both as the attacker and defender how Goichi and Fenrich are both navigating the six M situation. That's unfortunate. 6M again, this time with an assist. This is a very dangerous setup. Something Fenrich could have actually done here is he could have DR'd between the second reflect before um, uh, while uh, before Goichi reflected the second bit of uh, Vegeta's assist. I want to see him do that, but... Say lovey. Even without an assist, he goes for it. And look how he just waits, expecting, uh, expecting Goichi to do something, and Goichi uses the opportunity to jump back. DR. He went for the Vanish, hopefully to cross up the Reflect, but he didn't get it in time.
Now it's unfortunate. Unfortunate. But, you guys kind of get the idea, but now do you guys understand what I mean? When I say blocking 6M and the ability to react to 6M is actually a very good opportunity for the defender to escape if the opponent doesn't know it. Now, of course, there are options you have as the attacker. Fenrich is not utilizing a lot of them, but, you know, Fenrich doesn't have the team for this. Because there is something that I forgot to mention about Cell's particular situation. If you have a 46 frame block stun assist in the corner, if you 6M and then call the assist with the right time, you get the full 46 frames of block stun. Which means super jump IAD 50-50 that he cannot reflect or guard cancel. If not, he dies. He has to true guess. Something else that he can do is he could 6M, and if he sees Goichi respecting, EX perfect attack plus assist and get a 50-50 that way. So 6M, even though Fenrich is utilizing it incredibly well, there's actually more fucked up situations he could really be doing here. Unfortunately, this team is not really that conducive to it. But if he had a high blocks and assist as a mid, whew. Beautiful 6M. As you can see, Goichi doesn't really go for 6M very much, but Fenrich does. Oh, unfortunate. The homework, by the way. 2L, 5L into 50-50. Hmm? Mm. That's fucked. <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> you ever 6M somebody so much that they hold a 30 frame command grab? <laughs> T got hit by that. T got hit by that. Because you could actually see him stand block. He was expecting 6M. Watch. T, you got grabbed. This is you. This is what happened to you. This actually happened to you. This is how you held Goku Black's command grab on your birthday special, bro. This happened to you. <laughs> The worst part is, is he even called an assist, so that way he made him think it was 6M. That's fine. Oh, into third. Oh, God. He doesn't have enough bar for the 50 50. Well, he kind of has a bar for a 50 50 here. Ooh. Got hit meaty here. But no conversion. Right there, you just saw how 6M set up a pretty nasty command grab. Good job, Fenrich. I see you. I see you. I see you. T, you got thrown. LOL! <laughs> Pain! C, 
See, this is what I mean when I say I wish Fenrich did more cursed shit. He should have DR'd here. He should have just DR'd. I mean, Goichi might have teched it, but at least you're giving him something else to react to. Great super dash. No 6M. Mm. Fun fact. Fenrich could have sparked this and killed. Oh, pain. He did not react. It's very possible that he could have taken this hit because there was nothing he could have done about it. But, uh... You keep knocking at the door long enough, you will get a hit. Block that time. Even Goichi can't block them all, guys. So definitely incorporate 6M to your pressure. I actually think this is really, 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 really strong. Because if you have a character... If we take what Fenrich started, and we start using 6Ms in our pressure, I think we can actually begin incorporating more fucked up things. Pushing reaction times. Finding ways where we can actually trick people into taking things that they wouldn't normally take by mixing in other options for mental stack for the DR. So, or I'm sorry, for the 6M. So, I think that as attackers, we should use 6M more. And for defenders, look for 6M. If you can block 6M, you can reflect 6M. Don't forget that, guys. But that's going to be it for us. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to join me tomorrow for a casual stream. And then be sure to join me on Wednesday for a ring match evaluation. It should be fun. I'm going to see if I can get an angel trainee to join me at that time. So that way I don't have to do everything myself. And also, please join us on Saturday. So that way you guys can get the... Uh, the uh, That way you guys can actually get the uh, reward for the donations. Because guess what? Star is teaching me French. So if you want to see me learn French and while we play Dragon Ball, come and join us on Saturday for a donation reward. It is the last Saturday of the month. And once again, thank you so much to everyone who followed and thank you everyone who resubbed. If you guys are interested and you love the stream and you love our content and you want to support the stream, please consider donating. It is the best way to support the stream because that revenue goes directly to me and it also lets me know that you guys like the kind of content that we do, but most importantly, it helps me take more free time so that way I can develop the content into something a little bit better. So definitely keep an eye out for that, guys. That's going to be it for me. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Good night, y'all.